Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap with Southern California correspondent Scott Shapiro. ShapCap is sponsored by Derby Wars, your site for daily horse racing tournaments. And ShapperToCapper.com, your site for daily handicapping info from across the United States. Hey racing fans, welcome back to another edition of Horse Racing Nation presents ShapCap, where we'll look to rebound off a poor performance in the pilot edition when our top play 9-1 to shot Abbeyvale never picked up her feet in the Grade 2 San Marcos. While it was disappointing, that's okay, those kind of days are expected, and it's just important to keep a good attitude and be prepared to take advantage of the days when you are correct. Hopefully we'll be correct in the 8th race on Saturday's 9-race Santa Anita Park card, the Grade 2 Santa Maria. The Santa Maria is void of star power, especially with the absence of star mare Beholder. But the A-horse field has a runner that seems to stand out quite a bit to us. Number 8, Terrace Tango, fits a number of handicapping angles that we like quite a bit and will be our top play of the day. This Sone Street Stables filly for Jerry Hollendorfer is going to make the second start of her four-year-old campaign, which oftentimes can be a career best. In addition to that, she goes two sprints to a route for Hollendorfer and should have the foundation to hopefully put together the best effort of her career. Remember, the mile and a 16th distance last summer in the Summer Oak Stakes against champion Philly Stellar Win was one of her best, and she comes in off a career high by her speed figure last time out when Mike Smith gave her a bit of a curious ride in a seven furlong event, and she just missed late. She also comes into this event working wonderfully, including a January 30th work of four furlongs of 47 and three. It looks like Jerry Hollendorfer has a, this unbridled song, Philly, ready to roll. I also love the outside draw in this spot. She should be able to sit a perfect trip, stalking probable pace setters, Big Break and Yehua, and should get first run on late runners like the probable favorite number three, Bird at the Wire. If Martin Garcia can get the trip I envision, I see him drawing off and holding off the late runners. So how do you bet a horse like this? Well, last week it was obvious what to do with a 9-to-1 shot. You use the horse in the wind pool, place pool probably, and then you take some shots in the exactors and tries. But with a horse that's shorter priced, like Tara's Tango, you may not want to bet the horse to win. I would say 3-to-1 or higher may make this horse worth betting, but I could see her taking money and making her unworthy of a bet in the wind pool. I am going to take a shot at the trifecta in this spot. I think Tara's Tango is a key on top, and I think the number five, Kiraki, could provide some value underneath. This horse for Peter Yurton is not necessarily good enough to win, but should sit a mid-pack trip and might be able to finish second or third at quite a price. I also think number three, Bird at the Wire, makes perfect sense underneath, but will provide little value, much like number seven, Yehilwa, who will get a nice trip outside the other speed and big break. Maybe we can even sneak number two gas total in for trainer Richard Mandela and Flavian Pratt. Pratt usually is a pretty conservative rider and should save ground and look to pick up the pieces late. So, for our Horse Racing Nation play of the day, we may bet number eight Taras Tango to win if the price is right, but we're definitely going to play a dollar trifecta key. Taras Tango over Bird at the Wire, Gas Total, Yahilwa and long shot Kiriaki, and hope to get Kiriaki into the trifecta and beef that up quite a bit. All right, so let's get things back on track here, and let's get back to winning ways here in week two.